In agricultural settings all over California, we see a broad diversity of crops, from avocados to zucchini, providing nectar and pollen to honeybees and native pollinators, including native bees, wasps, and other insects. When a single crop dominates a region, it can lead to a profusion of resources for pollinators, but only for a small amount of time when the crop is blooming. The solution? Pollinator hedgerows. Quail bush, Salvia gregii, California hibiscus. My name is Fred Stolp, and uh, we are in Durham, California, in Butte County. We have a half section of land here. Uh, it's all in walnuts now. It used to be alfalfa and row crop. And then about four years ago, I heard about the hedgerow project that NRCS was helping with. And that's when we started laying this out. The interest in pollinator hedgerows uh, is, of course, to try to have pollinators available all year long, to have something blooming all year long. That way to establish a population that uh, will be beneficial for the various crops that are grown in the area. I know there's lots of different kinds of native bees that are coming in here and using this area for habitat. One of the things I'd say about hedgerows, it, it's fun to be able to walk down and see the birds that are coming into them, watch the hummingbirds, watch the bees, and they're pretty. I mean, just from an aesthetic point of view, I really enjoy having it here. It's important for farmers to establish pollinator habitat. There's been a lot of declines in European honeybee populations lately. They're becoming more expensive and less available. In California, pollinator-dependent crops account for over $11 billion worth of our agricultural production. About a third of that can be attributed to native pollinators. Well, the biggest challenge to install and maintain a hedgerow is weed control. We've used uh, a weed mat around some of the plants to at least give ourselves some buffer. We've used pre-emergent herbicides to try to cut down the amount of weeds that are sprouting in the fall. And we've done a lot of hand work. It's important to, to irrigate a hedgerow, in, especially during establishment. If you don't irrigate them, you have a really hard time getting really good take in the hedgerow. So this is a newer planting of hedgerow. There's some deer, deer grass planted here and coyote bush. And this is only a couple years old, and each one of the plants has its own irrigation admitter. And soon this whole hedgerow will be as tall and filled in as the ones we've seen earlier today. Here we're looking at the forb components of the pollinator hedgerows, which are essentially herbaceous plants. Oftentimes, the shrubs in the hedgerows take a number of years to become mature and produce a large pollen and nectar source for pollinators. So we can get the benefits almost immediately by planting wildflowers, essentially. So the very next season after you plant it, you have a, a huge amount of pollen and nectar for your pollinators. NRCS has helped with the selection of the species and uh, with cost shares and uh, just with advice along the way. The NRCS can help a farmer who's interested in a hedgerow through the conservation planning process. We assist in planning and selecting the plants in technical assistance on how to put it in properly and different techniques you might have for the weed control or the irrigation or any challenges you might have. As well as we have opportunities for cost share assistance through our Farm Bill programs. If you would like more information on pollinator hedgerows or other conservation practices, contact the district conservationist at your local NRCS office or visit our website.